Hello, dear all. Welcome to a new episode of Dr. Zen. In today's episode, we will talk about skin diseases and specifically about skin cancer. Let me welcome our special guest, Dr. Hala Al Sheikh Ali from Dr. Camille Al Rustam Skin and Laser Center. Welcome, Dr. Hala. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hala, uh, first of all, I want to ask you what are the common complaints you usually get from your patients? As a specialist dermatologist, I see many patients of different complaints because as a dermatologist, I treat hair, nail, and skin diseases. Also, I do cosmetic procedures like Botox, fillers, mesotherapy, chemical peel, fine threads. Also, I work on lasers for different applications. And actually, I'm very lucky here in Dr. Kimil Rustom Clinic because Dr. Kimil Rustom brought all the machines for uh, lasers, like we have machine to treat skin diseases like psoriasis and vitiligo. We have laser for nevus, whether it's vascular or pigmented. We have laser for pigmentation, hair removal laser, rejuvenation, acne scar for weight loss. So I'm practicing all these and actually our clinic see a patient with all complaints about these things. Okay, so Dr. Hala, as I understand, you have the multiple services and treatment ways that goes under dermatology and skin treatment. Okay, uh, what would you like to tell us uh, regarding the skin cancer? What are the risk factors of getting skin cancer? We consider that the sun is number one causing skin cancer. Actually, sun is number one enemy to the skin. And everybody should know this information because we are living in a sunny country like UAE. Uh, the second risk factor, we can consider the viruses. There's a special type of human papilloma virus could cause skin cancer. Some rare hereditary syndrome could cause skin cancer. People who got the fair complex, people with red or uh, blonde hair, green or blue eyes, are at higher risk to get skin cancer than people with a darker skin. Also, there's smoking. And we can add some environmental factors that some people are in touch with, like arsenic. As a patient, what should I look for on my skin? I would like to mention something important here. When I was in USA, most people get the awareness that they should come to see a doctor at least once a year. But here in the UAE, people usually come to doctor just when, when they have a disease or when, when they want to do something cosmetic. Exactly. And that's wrong because actually skin cancer is the most common cancer in a human. And a lot of people don't know that. So we should increase awareness and tell the people that they should go to dermatologists to check if anything wrong on their bodies because we can depend just only on what they notice to see if there's something wrong uh, with their skin. But I can mention a few things for the people who are seeing us now. Any patient who have more than 50 mole on his body should go and see doctor. Any patient who have a transparent lesion that bleeds spontaneously should go and see a doctor. Anybody who got mole or pigmented nevus, and this nevus now start to bleed, to itch, to elevate, any change in it, the patient should come and see a doctor. Also, if a patient has a scar, whatever the cause of this scar, whether it's from burn, whether it's from vaccination, and the patient now notice a change in this scar, he should go directly and see a doctor. If a patient notice any growth that appear one year, and it did not disappear, and it's completely silent, the patient should go and see doctor for that. Because as the doctors, as dermatologists, we consider that these cases are suspicious cases. Okay, doctor, as you were saying, uh, these are some of the symptoms uh, of skin cancer. What about the melanoma uh, cancer? Is it dangerous? Can it spread? Actually, melanoma is one of the most dangerous cancers that could affect the humans. And uh, it's surgically curable if we treat it in early stages. But if the diagnosis and treatment were late, it could be lethal. Uh, melanoma is a cancer that appears uh, from melanocyte, from the cells that give the pigment to the skin. And unfortunately, it starts to appear at early ages now. Before that, we were looking at people in their 60s or 50s to have melanoma. But now, patients in their 30s and their 40s 
start to have melanoma. Okay, doctor. And in your opinion, can melanoma spread in the human's body? Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so dangerous. Actually, melanoma is one of a few cancers that get metastasis at early stages. And uh, when the metastasis happen, uh, the survival rate is less than six months. So it could spread. How is skin cancer treated? Uh, I mean, what are the ways to prevent skin cancer? The subject that you are talking about is very important because all the time in the media, you can hear people speaking about lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, but nobody's speaking about skin cancer, though it's the most common cancer in humans. So we should increase the awareness of people about skin cancer, not underestimate it because as I told you before, the skin cancer usually affect people at elderly, elderly people, but now it starts to affect people at younger age. We can prevent the skin cancer by putting some block, and everybody should put some block. You know, the baby, one year old, should put some block. And uh, of course, we should some block before some exposure, 30 minutes, and repeat it every three hours. Even the pregnant women, the breastfeeding ladies, they all should apply some, some block. And uh, also to prevent skin cancer, I advise, I advise people if they have uh, infected with viruses, with the human papilloma virus, especially in the genital area, they should go to the dermatologist to get the appropriate treatment for that. And of course, just to avoid sun as much as they can, because as I told you, the sun is number one enemy to the skin. How we can treat a skin cancer? Actually, the best treatment is by doing surgery. It's excisional biopsy that we can uh, take the, the tumor off. And also we can, there's another thing we do it uh, in uh, our clinics, it's a cryotherapy. Uh, it's something very easy, without stitches, without surgery, and it gives 99% of a cure, uh, cureness to the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can do also cryotherapy, there is also cauterization. Of course, when the cancer gives metastasis, at this time we need to do the CAT scan, the MRI, and the patient should go to radiotherapy, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. Doctor for skin cancer. Now, as I understood, of course, if it's in early stages, it will be treated. But what if it goes to or high stages? Can it be uh, treated? Uh, is it going to be more difficult in the treatment way? Actually, it's like like any another cancer. In early stages, um, it's curable. And I would like to say that a basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common kind of a skin cancer, it's curable just by doing cryotherapy. It's something so simple, they can do it in less than one minute in a clinic. So it's curable in early stages and it gives very good survival rate. Mm. But of course, in the later stages when the metastasis happen, the patient have to go to a, a more serious treatment, like going to do radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and the survival rate is not that good. But the patient, I think, um, in my opinion, that the patient should go for treatment whatever the stage is. Mm -hmm. As you said, doctor, earlier, any patient feels something is abnormal or they need to consult a dermatologist. Uh, let, it, let it make exactly. it as an annual or Exactly. This is checkup. because safe, better than sorry. Because mm -hmm. the patient, if they notice anything wrong, they should go to the doctor. Because in early stages, everything is curable. Mm -hmm. And when, when, we, when we say that it's a cure, that the patient will forget that he has cancer in his life, mm -hmm. that the skin cancer is not, is, is not like the other cancer that you have to go for checkup for a long uh, time. No, it just need to check up just only two or two or three years and everything will be done at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, doctor, uh, as you said, one of the reasons is sun exposure. Uh, what are the cumulative effects of sun exposure? Thank you for mentioning this is this this is really very important a question because Sun has a cumulative effect, that this effect shown after maybe 10 years to 20 years. It's not just only dangerous to get skin cancer, but also cosmetic, like the people who are getting a lot of exposure to sun could get early aging with, with all the meaning of the word aging, like wrinkles, falls, pigmentation, uh, broken blood vessels in the face, uh, elastosis, open pores, large comedones, and all these effects 
appear after 10 years of sun exposure and it's appear suddenly, like in just two weeks they appear. So I saw many patients in my clinic come and say, oh doctor, before two weeks we did not have this on, on our face or on our body and it's appeared suddenly. And that's, and that's true because this is the cumulative effect of the sun. It appears suddenly after many years of sun exposure. And for that, I always tell the patient just to be careful because every day I see many patients in my clinic and when I told them just to, to put some blood, they told me, no doctor, we are really exposing to the sun and we don't see any, anything wrong with our skin, with our bodies. That's right for now, but they will see the effect after years and at this time, many or actually most of these effects are irreversible. Uh, doctor, as you said earlier, especially here in uh, UAE, we uh, we have humidity, high uh, high degrees in, in general, most of the seasons. So I want to ask you, uh, using the sunscreen, I think it's something that we really need yeah. to concern. When should we use the sunscreen? Actually, everybody should use the sunscreen. Starting from baby one year old, should put the sunscreen, mm -hmm. men and women. And the best way is to put sunscreen 30 minutes before sun exposure and then repeat it every three hours. Of course, if a person take a shower or swim, he should reapply the sunblock again. Sunscreen is something in our, I don't know, in our tradition, in our culture, something that we don't use to it here in the Middle East. And it's so, it's so many times it have a bad reputation that it's something chemical or it's like makeup, the girls put it on their face. Actually, Everybody should apply sunblock and there is no ex excuse for that because it could cause, as I told you before, skin cancer and skin cancer is the most common cancer in a human. What about the sun tanning? Because most of the people, they go for tanning without using the sunscreen. What's the best way to do tanning but trying to minimize the risks? Actually, there is no safe tan. With sunscreen or without sunscreen, there is no safe tan. I know it's fashionable. I know that usually in the media they associate the tan skin with healthy, sporty body, but that's not right. Tanning is so harmful to the skin, and that's why skin cancer now start to appear at younger ages, because most of the young uh, men and women have the mania just to do uh, the, sun, the sun tanning, whether it's solarium, beds, uh, sun bath on the beach, uh, in swimming pool, all it's dangerous, all it causes skin cancer, it's sun rays. Do you know that 10 minutes in solarium equals three hours in the sun? So, so what I want to tell you that it's very dangerous, though it's, as I told you in the media, they uh, make a promotion for it as if it's something very beautiful and so healthy, mm -hmm. but that's wrong. And also it causes skin aging and uh, it causes also uh, hippo and hyperpigmentation. If you notice that many people who do the tan to their bodies, you can find hippopigmented spots on their body. Mm -hmm. And that's a period. It looks like vitiligo, but it's not vitiligo. Actually, these changes, if the patient did not treat it when it's appeared, it could be irreversible. So I advise the patient not to do tanning. If they want this beautiful color, they can use makeup. They can use makeup, body lotion, sprays to get the color, but don't expose yourself to something that is harmful and it could cause cancer and kill you. This is my advice to the patient. Doctor, also as you said earlier, sunscreen should be used starting from early age babies, and teenagers, adults, whoever has to use the sunscreen. But I wanted to ask you, uh, are there any sunscreen designed for sensitive skin? Yes, there is. Actually, the market is full of uh, so many brands for sunblock with different purpose for oily, for dry skin and different shape, gel, uh, lotion, powder with makeup, without makeup. But maybe that's why it's, it's uh, because it's over the counter in the pharmacy. That's why it takes a bad reputation in our area because uh, usually the patient goes to the pharmacy and choose one of the sunblock that he believes that it's good for his or for her skin. And here's the problem, because in my clinic, when I see the patient and I want to prescribe for them some block, they said, no, we've tried before, it's oily, it's shiny, it's because they choose something wrong for their skin. So I advise the patient just to go to the dermatologist 
dermatologist is the best one who will know what skin type do you have and what's the appropriate sunblock for, for hair or hair skin. So the doctor will tell the patient what's the difference between each and every type of sunscreen, right doctor? Actually the doctor will know what the kind of his skin because most of the people got mixed skin. Mm -hmm. They have oily and a normal skin or they have a dry and normal skin and maybe sometimes the patient is the, the skin of the patient is normal but because he used oily product maybe mm -hmm. especially in females the the makeup it causes comedones and it makes the skin appear oily so they go and choose something for uh, oily skin and it will harm their skin so the doctor will know the best the type of the skin the patient has which the shape of uh, sunblock is better for them whether it's a spray gel lotion cream and also i think the dermatologist will help the patient better to know also what the other things that the skin may need uh, now doctor coming to the last uh, point is there any uh, special advice you would like to whoever is watching us right now i advise the patient to apply sunblock and if they try before something that they did not like maybe it's not suitable for their skin they could go to the dermatologist to choose the right one for them but apply sunblock the second thing I would like to tell the patient who have a personal or family history of a skin cancer that they should come and do regular checkup. The third thing is that skin cancer is the most common cancer in humans. We should not underestimate the situation. Everybody should educate himself or herself about that to protect ourselves from getting this cancer. Thank you so much, doctor, for your advices and your time. And it was really useful for us and for those people who are watching us now. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Hala Shahali. So Thank, Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Dr. Hala has given us some very important advices. And I hope that all, whoever is watching us, to get the useful of that, especially by seeing a dermatologist whenever you feel that some abnormality comes on your body. Thank you and have a good day.